Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 156 today, and we're back for what's a quite important episode, both personally and for this series. The reason for that is that the first game is against Larn in the SPFL Trust Trophy quarter final. A very tough game, them and Linfield, when at full strength, have always given us a challenge and have done well in Europe too. We haven't won this competition in around three years. We're looking to end that hoodoo now. But Milan have got the crucial edge. They've managed to get the game moved from the international break despite us wanting to go ahead with it. So their squad is going to be almost at full strength. That will make this very difficult. We then faced Stad Durham in a Champions League. We saw how good we were away from home against them in the first group stage match. It's a chance to add another crucial coefficient point for Welsh football. We'll then take a look at how the other sides do in the Europa League too. Because for the first time, we're hoping we'll have three sides in Europe after Christmas. So if you're looking forward to all of that, an action-packed episode on the pitch, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content every weekday from this series. And a new special mini-series starts this Saturday and Sunday, hopefully to get us through the tedious international break. But thank you very much for joining along as always. There's links to the Twitch channel and the football podcast up in the eye above. But let's start this episode as we usually do having a look at our recent results because to be honest it's been a little bit of a mixed bag the reason i say that is because you were with me for the juventus defeat and the big win against lanetley and although we've won all of our games bar the juve one we've not been wholly convincing at times and maybe that's to be expected at this stage of the season so against mb in the league cup that was a thoroughly convincing win a 7-0 victory that time Young Leo Blake got a great goal off the bench, but it was hat-tricks for Broadbent and Lowe's at the sub-strikers that stole the show. We backed that up with a 2-0 win at Swansea Uni. This game is the one that really worried me. Agost, as you can see, has got a match rate in a 7.4. He was sensational. We've really struggled against them. And in the end, second-half goals from Jones and Davis pretty much got us out of jail there against the side we're expecting to go down this year. Against Juventus though in the Champions League, we were back to full strength and we delivered. A brilliant draw at home to a very good side. Gallo got the goal early on and we did have a few chances to really get put to bed. But we stayed in the game and we so often talk about the importance of that. In the end, Kane Waters got the goal and towards the end, we were time wasting our backsides off. We had players behind the ball. We had three centre midfielders rather than a number 10. It was carnage, but we clung on and that was all that mattered. The two games after that, though, we were in fine form again. 3-0 away against TNS, two before the break from Walters and Reyes, and a late one from Geffen Davis. Kyle Bolkley missing a penalty in that one, though. And then a 6-0 win at home to Haverford West. Braces for Walters, Goulding, and Harvey Lloyd. Basically, Bolkley didn't play in that match. Harvey Lloyd went on free kicks, and you can see the outcome there. An early red card very much to help us, albeit we were 2-0 up already. But a comfortable victory, a comfortable win. And into these two games in fine form. Semankas so unfortunately has a knock. He'll miss this long game. Though we were going to rotate fully anyway. And I know that gives Lar more of a chance. But the coefficient points are so much more important. So let's go and have a look at the Welsh Premier League. Because I wanted to very quickly show you something that looks quite interesting. We've talked before about some of the sides going professional. And the way that this league could look soon. At the moment, Bala are very securely in the top five. And they're the only side up there that are semi-pro. They've had one run in Europe. They've got a good team now, though. So hopefully that will change if they can get there this year. The rest of the league, though, bar Cardiff met uni, obviously, down to 10th place, are all professional. And the two sides in the relegation zone are an amateur university side, who have got money, so will be able to improve things, and Aberystwyth, who are semi-professional and haven't had a great stint in recent years, just floated in the bottom half time and time again. So we could get to the stage next year if two professional sides come up where we have a minimum of 10 professional sides out of 12. Cardiff Met Uni are always going to be left. But Bala Town, if they go professional, it could be 11 out of 12. And that could be an incredible achievement. We look at the top of the other leagues at the moment. Airbus are semi-pro. Connors Key behind them the same. So unless really Landudno go and have a great run, they've been professional before. I don't think we're going to get one out of that side. However, in the south, Carmarthen are top. They're professional. Athen Lido behind a semi-pro, but we're their parent club, so I reckon we could pump a bit of money into them. But if Carmarthen come up, if we can get a miracle from the north, we could have a lot of professional sides, or a record high in the Welsh Premier League, which is another sign in that builder nation. 
But let's crack on with our first game today against Lan. They're going first team because they've got through the international break and got the fixture moved. We're going for reserve team because we need to focus on the Champions League and getting those coefficient points high. What that means today is we've got a very unfamiliar team. Even Tom Jones is getting a break because I only really want to play him in the league matches. He is getting close to that record now though, so we'll start talking about that soon. Reyes out of the squad completely, as is Bektas. The likes of Simankas and Kelly injured. Mubarak Whelan very tired after the internationals too. But our starting eleven is as follows. We've got a Gostin goal. Dimitar Nenov becoming far too good for a backup team player now. We're going to have to have a rethink in the summer there. Do we re-sign McDonald? Or is it finally the year we let things go? Because Nenov at 19 looks superb. We've got Mackenzie and Jennings at centre-half with Morgan over at left-back. McWilliams, Bamford, Strom and Davis, the midfield diamond, with Broadbent and Lozer up front. There's goals everywhere in this team. There's no point panicking. It's about whether we can deliver or not. Let's go and see if we can. Not sure which way round to play the strikers just yet. I'm just seeing who's better in the air. Lozer is. So, that's the way we're going to go for it. It's Lan v Manga City. And hopefully, we don't get stopped in our tracks for the third year in a row. Well, the danger man for Lan is very much Sean Patton up front. He's a regular Northern Irish international. He's a goal scorer and he's electric quick. And even six, seven, eight years ago when we were playing in this competition, he was the man scoring against us. Probably even longer than that because he is 30 years of age now. But let's get into the first half. It's going to be a tough game in Northern Ireland. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, I'll go and have a look at Patton quickly. Not the best finisher in the world, but he's got everything else, particularly physically. He's got nine goals in 39 caps for Northern Ireland. He's that good. But if I go and show you Lan, they regularly finish second in the league behind Linfield. Their key player, Connor Banks, is at 23. Wow, very good. And how he's not an international, I don't know. But the Northern Irish League at the moment is flying up the coefficients too. It's in 24th. It's also a three-star reputation competition. So they're basically keeping pace with us. In this build, a nation has benefited Northern Ireland and Ray Rovers just as much as it has us. We'll see what Lan can do today as Patton picks it up 25 yards out. Back to Marn on the edge of the box. Been a good start by the hosts here. Coming back to Marn again. Gets into the area. And there's the danger. If you were doubting me at all, you maybe thought like some of the European games. I was just being a little bit pessimistic. I was just getting a little carried away with the opposition's quality. Don't be. 20 minutes, we've only had one shot, and Lan lead the game pretty comfortably. Marn up front, again, not the best player, but electric quick and a great finisher. They're players that have got all the key attributes, and you can see that in their performance. As we've got a throw-in on the right-hand side from Nenor, finds Loza, and he switches to Morgan, who's already on a booking, has not played well. I think he gave away the free kick that led to the goal. As Bamford gets it through to Loza again, this is where we need quality. Kresimir Loza denied by a brilliant sliding tackle. Right down at the last ditch. I think the keeper would have saved it anyway. But it's now a corner kick. Geffen Davis will take. Into the front post. McFall heads away. Not the best corner. Davis comes in again though. And that shot's deflected behind. Lan, you can see, throwing their bodies in front of it. And so far, it's been a pretty comfortable day for them. You can see we've packed the away end as the corner's in again. And McFall wins yet another one. It's absolutely awful delivery. And we're really missing Bulkley and Lloyd from that front. Banks wins the ball back. Lan survive. And with half an hour gone, there's not been much in it. As we've got a throw on the right-hand side with Nenov. Just nine minutes to the break now. Loza gets into the area. Gives it away though. It's cleared as far as McWilliams who finds Gwyn Morgan. Needs to make up for that error early doors but can only give it away with a crossfield pass. Bamford wins it back for Sromno. Into Carlton Broadbent. Not there with a the finish though. Just wider the near post. And it remains 1-0 to Lan, and they've had more shots on target. They've counted as well, as Davis puts another corner straight on McFall's head. This is starting to frustrate me now. Bamford gives it to McWilliams, to McKenzie, out to Nenov. We need one moment of class, and Nenov almost produced it there. It's a brilliant through ball to Kresimir Loza, but he was just too close to the keeper, and he makes a fantastic save down to his left. Another Davis corner's hit the first man. One more of them, I'm taking him off absolutely woeful delivery. I've got to see, what is his corner taking attribute? I'll have a quick look. 12, and he can't beat the first man four times in a row. Utterly woeful. I'm going to throw the water bottle. We're going to get really annoyed here because that's the worst I've seen in a long time. And we saw it last year when we were playing Hearts and Livingston and even in some of the European games. We were really poor in the first half and it cost us so many times. So as we get to the hour mark here, 
I think we're going to need to be saved. There's going to be some superstars coming on. We'll be back in a moment when they've been introduced. Right, half an hour to go. Kai McDonald, Kyo Bulkley, Kane Waters all on. This has got to happen now. That is Lana in possession again in the right back area. They're keeping it nicely, but they concede it there to Bamford. Eventually win it back though. McDonald picks it up on halfway. This is what we brought you on for. Go on one of your charges. Played into Strom. To Bulkley. Lovely touch. Lovely through ball. Krasimir Lowe's are too slow in possession. It's not good enough as McDonald gets it on the right again. Brilliant play to take on his man. Delivers towards Waters just beyond him. Waters gets there by the corner flag. We can't even blame the pitch. It's a narrow one that suits us. A strong hit straight at the keeper. It's a little bit uninspired as Jennings wins it from the quick distribution to Strom. Bamford to McWilliams. I'd love to have bought on four or five, although that's a missed header at the back. Loza's in one on one. What a save by Wright. Stunning goalkeeping. We're going to demand more. But what a bit of goalkeeping that was as Kyo Bulkley delivers the corner. At least he finds one of our players and doesn't hit the first man. But they lose out in the air and it's cleared as far as from. You can certainly see the change in momentum though. It's all Bangor City at the moment. We're flying forward at speed. We're creating chances. We just haven't taken one yet. The goalkeeper's had the game of his life. And now Lana on the counter on the right. As Jennings heads it away as far as Carter. Crossed in towards the back post. Headed away as far as Banks. And now Butcher. The left back loses out to McDonald. Bamford can clear. Now can we get there? Kresimir Loza. We could do with him turning provider. Walters is in the middle. He's beating his man. Goes alone. Kresimir Loza. And he hit it so hard at the keeper. It wasn't a great strike. It wasn't placed at all. But he hit it so hard that it just sort of took the keeper into the net with him. One all with 15 minutes to go. And with this momentum... I'm hoping we might nick a winner as Patton's got it at the other end to Cohen. McDonald with a brilliant tackle. Bulkley clears to Walters. Loza's running off him, but Walters wants to go alone. He's done loads of them. There's four in the box. Came Walters all the way. Another great save. This goalkeeper has had the game of his life. It's a Kyo Bulkley corner. We need the delivery to be right. Outswinger from the right hand side. Is it the first man now, too? And it's straight out for a throw, and we're 10 to go. What a performance from Lance Keeper. Wright is, well, to be fair, he's as good as, if not slightly better than George Wickens, who was our first choice until, what, two or three years ago. He's a very good goalkeeper, and he's proven it today. He might get a big move off the back of this, as Lance ship it forward down the left-hand side. Banks gives it inside, the fullback's overlapping, but McDonald wins it back again. He's been brilliant defensively. Bulkley runs away with it. Down the right-hand side, into the penalty area, brought down for the penalty. There is no way on earth Kyo Bulkley has taken this. He's missed both penalties this season. Bamford has scored two out of three. Strom hasn't taken one. Walters three out of three. You can't beat a striker in form. Off the bench, McDonald won the ball. Bulkley countered and won the penalty. Now can Kane Walters score it? Steps up left footed into the bottom corner. And the three super subs come to the rescue. I told you this would be a hard game. But the last half an hour since we bought on the superstars, we've looked a different class. And that's a luxury that I'm afraid Lange just don't have. Into stoppage time we go. It's been a very good comeback performance. But the first hour of that game... Shows there's still a lot of improvement to be had. As Kai McDonald chases back to win the ball again. He's been phenomenal since coming on. Bamford picks it up to Loza. Holds it up well. Loza's had a good game bar his finishing generally. As McDonald gets it on the right. Can we put a little gloss on it? Make it look like a comprehensive win. It's into Kai O'Bulkley. And it's just over the bar. But again, those three subs are so heavily involved. And in the end, by the skin of our teeth. We get through. It's Larn 1 and Bangor City 2. But my word, they gave us one hell of a scrap. And on that form, I'm not sure we win the competition still. We're back for the second game in this double header. It is a massive one. Because coefficient wise, Welsh football needs us to get a result. And it could really do with the other sides getting through in Europe after Christmas as well. But the fact that we're even talking about that is a good sign. What is a little more promising this year, if we have a look at Wales, is so far... We've picked up 4.1 coefficient points as a nation this year, which to put into perspective, bar possibly, is that Russia and Croatia, we have picked up more or near enough the same as everyone else who's close to us. The problem though, is where we stand at the moment on 32.4 points isn't enough. We're going to be overtaken by Denmark 
And that would leave us down in 13th place because they're losing a much worse year than us. And we're losing one of our far better ones. So we really do need to pick up the pace and make sure that we go on a big run. We've got to make sure we wrap up no frills, Europa League football after Christmas. And then just fingers crossed and everything else as well that the other two can make it to the Europa Conference knockouts. Because the, the effects of falling to 13th basically mean that the other two are no longer guaranteed European group stage football. Because we would have a Europa League third qualifying round instead of a playoff. Which means you can technically go out. And we could be in a spot of bother. So I've got to hope we're going to get into it and try and do our bit. And then we'll keep our eyes firmly peeled on what's going to happen on Thursday night. We're playing what should be the whipping boys at home. If I show you the group table now, you'll know that we beat them. We got the point against Juventus. So we have done pretty well. We're on four points. Juve only on seven. So we could ironically be on level points today with Juve. But of course they've got the better head-to-head -head record. And we're not going to get past them no matter what here. But still, what a performance, what an achievement. Can we complete the job and get seven points and add that little bit of gloss and add those crucial little points? Let's go and make the changes the assistant recommends. We'll be back in a moment to discuss the lineup. It'll be as close to full strength as it can be. I can promise you that. Lots of quality and notably more experience than we often see in these matches. Kaya Bulkley still having his sulk, so we've got a slight problem with him. But I've gone two number 10s. Tom Jones is in as well. We're going all out to get the win here. Simancas is between the sticks. Jerome Kelly's back with Whitaker at centre-half. McDonald and Bektas are the full-backs. Lloyd, Reyes, Bulkley, Jones, the most attacking and high-quality midfield diamond we can name. With Goulding and Walters up front. Attacking stars all over the bench. Davis, Loza, Strom, Nenov even as a flying fullback. If we need a substitution to win the game... I think we've got it right there. Let's go and get into it. A home to our French visitors. 11 changes from the last match. And those that came on in that game changed it. Let's hope they can all do the same tonight. Well, our visitors still got Shilder as skipper. Still a few of the other names we recognise. But defensively, they were all at sea against us. We've got to hope that we can get back to our best in this one. And if we do, I feel like it could be a comfortable win. I'm really disappointed with the attendance for it. But then... Our visitors aren't going to bring thousands of fans over like some of the other clubs. And that's perhaps what's caused it. A quiet five minutes, but we're dominating the possession. And hopefully it won't be long till we get on top. As Whitaker's got it deep in their half. Look how high up the pitch we are. Reyes plays a 1-2 with McDonald. Goes back to Whitaker. Chips out to McDonald, who'd made the overlapping run. There's three in the middle, but he cuts back to Reyes. McDonald again. Got to deliver it. Reyes into Tom Jones. Blocked the first time, but falls for Lloyd Goulding. Jones gets the assist. Golden gets the goal. Nine minutes gone. 1-0 Bangor City. Now let's go and make this a thrashing. As we're 23 minutes gone, we've got another corner kick. Kyle Bulkley puts it into the back stick. Just over Golden and it's headed away. But Lloyd can recycle it. And now Bektas had stayed back for the corner but picks it up and is now marauding down the left wing. Bulkley goes back to Lloyd. Bektas is flying still. Gets to the byline. Crosses for Tom Jones. It's a good save from the keeper down to his left. Really excellent work in truth. And it stays 1-0. But we are thoroughly on top here. And all we've got to do is keep solid defensively. Because if that remains the case, this should be a pretty comfortable win. As Bulkley's got another dangerous position for his free kick. Headed away from Goulding as far as Tom Jones. Right side of the box. He can cut it back to Reyes. Goes for the first time shot. And it caught the keeper out. In fairness to him, he had one of his own defenders right in front. It must have restricted the view. He saw it late. But he got what in the end was a pretty feeble hand to it. And it goes in at the near side netting. 2-0 Bangor City. I think we've done the job now. Let's just not get complacent. 2-0 as we come up to half time. And we've got a free kick on the left hand side. Kyle Bulkley to take it. Doesn't go for the shot. Oh my word. Bulkley doesn't deliver the free kick. He doesn't shoot. He doesn't cross. He cuts it back to Jones on the edge of the box. Who flies in with a thunderous strike. The closest thing I can think. Albeit not identical. Was the Manchester United corner. Back the old Paul Scholes from the Beckham corner in 2000. Was it a Bradford? It was almost the same but just from a free kick. Bulkley back to Jones. And the two youth intake stars have carried us through in Europe again. Excellent performance. It's 3-0 on the night. Now let's get into the second half and see if we can keep it going. Oh, I was about to say the decision to pick Tom Jones is well and truly justified today. Now he's picked up a knock. So I'm going to bring on Geffen Davis. Bulkley's getting tired as well. He's had a really good game, but I'm also going to rest him. I don't want to take any risks at this point. I'm almost of a mind to bring on somebody for a bit of a run out. I'm not going to do it there. I'm going to bring on Ludomir Strom. 
But then at the back, Jerome Kelly first came back from injury. Let's be sensible now with the game wrapped up. Mubarak Whelan on for him. Another Champions League experience for the youngster. Chelsea level with Juventus. That's been a great game over there. But we're looking comfortable with a quarter to go. Though Shilder's got a throw on the left. The last thing we want to do is give them a route back in. Give them a grandstand finish. But it is a risk with less experience coming on. As Bastien's got it in the centre circle. Switches right. Whelan's there to head away. It does really well. Because they would have been in if he'd hadn't won that. I think Bektas had got caught out of position. Though now we're at the other end with Walters. Oh, what a finish. I tell you what. These lads are on form today. Some fantastic strikes. Gordon gets his second. Piles it into the corner from 20 yards. It wasn't much of an assist, but it will do. And it's 4-0 again, as it's a free kick into the box for the visitors. Beats everybody. Bastian picks it up on the left. Back to Tamburini. Tries to cross as a great ball in. And Charlo puts it away. 4-1. We concede the goal. I'm a little bit frustrated by that, as is Simancas, you can see. But a really good cross. There's not a huge amount you could have done about that, other than perhaps close it down a bit better. The only thing I'm worried about at the moment, though, is if Tom Jones has got a bad injury. To break that league appearance record as we go five up now. Geffen Davis with the ball in. What a header it was. Goulding delivered the cross. Davis making the run. But if Tom Jones has got a bad injury, that will affect the chance of getting that league appearance record. He's got to stay fit to do it. As we've got a throw in the right back area. McDonald with a poor ball. Whitaker does pretty well with it in truth. And it finds its way back to McDonald at right back. Chips down the line. Goulding will chase it. He's on a hat trick, but he can't get anywhere near that one. Shielder delivers it for Rem. Into Fisher, who beats the fullback. Bektas turned all ends up. And the shot's just wide. Simancas was beaten. And he watched it and looked on with relief as it whistled past the far post. A 5-1 victory, though. We were never in threat of losing the game. It's just that we were a little bit poorer at the back than we would have liked. The last thing we've got to look at, though, is fingers crossed it's not a bad Tom Jones injury. We'll see how Barrytown United and TNS get on on Thursday night. It's bad, but it's not too bad. Three to four weeks for Tom Jones, and actually the timing's not disastrous. He's going to miss two league games, I think, but then we've got the Welsh Cup and we've got the last Champions League match. So if ever there was a time to do it, it was probably now, because he'll be back for the busy winter rush. So we're going to leave that to the physio. We're not going to risk him against Cardiff Met Uni. Loads of money in the bank for another win. We're absolutely flying. Lloyd Gordon's going to get the praise, and then we're going to find out what happens on Thursday to our Welsh counterparts. Well, kind of a good and bad night combined into one for Welsh football and the other two sides in Europe. So, Barrytown United lost 3-0 at home to Dinamo Zagreb, who, by the looks of it, have been by far the best side in the group. They've won every game. And then TNS lost 5-0 at home to Arsenal, which we would have expected. But the other results went in both of their favours. So, Legia Warsaw lost 1-0 to Dinamo Kiev. That means that Barrytown United only have to equal Legia Warsaw's results to get through next time. And given the fact they'll be playing tabletop as Dinamo Zagreb, that gives Barry one hell of a chance. TNS, on the other hand, are still in pole position for third as well. They definitely can't get second. But if we go and have a look at the other result in the group, Copenhagen won pretty comfortably. Which means TNS, playing the Romanian side on the last day, I think it's away from home, just need a draw to get through. So it looks like we're probably, unless it's a terrible night at the office, Going to have three Welsh sides in Europe after Christmas, which would be history. We will be back in either January or February. There's not normally too many games over the winter period, so I'm not going to worry too much if we don't get it. And we've got a massive game against St Johnston in the SPFL Trust Trophy semi-final. That should come at the same time as our Europa League last 32 match. So I think we might show the first leg of that and the St Johnston game too. If you did enjoy this episode, though, a very tense game against Larm before a comfortable Champions League victory, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from this series every weekday at half three, with a new special mini-series starting throughout September at the weekends from this Saturday. You can find links to some of the other stuff in the eye above, including a football podcast channel and the Twitch channel too. We've got regular live streams from FM and Football Watch Along, so come and join us for the chat. And I'll see you next time for what should be the return of European football after Christmas and history for Welsh football. I hope for a big transfer window too. I'll see you there. Yeah.